This is the EKB TV Evening News. Local News at 6. Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6. New details about a Pike County shooting. Good evening, I'm Gary Sloan. We now have more information about a Pike County shooting we first told you about last night. Kentucky State Police troopers were assisting a social worker during a social services check at a residence on Phillips Branch at Phelps, but quickly found themselves immersed in a much more dangerous situation. Trooper Stephen Mounts explains what the officers encountered when they arrived at the scene. Yesterday, troopers from Post 9 responded with Pike County DSS uh, to a residence in the Phillips Branch community of Phelps. Uh, on scene, the troopers encountered gun gunfire coming from the residence. Um, short time later, a male exited the residence, uh, advising the troopers that he had been shot. Court records identify the shooting victim as Cloyd Blankenship. He sustained gunshot wounds to the leg and was taken to Pikeville Medical Center for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. The officers were then confronted by a man with a gun. As troopers approached the home, they were confronted by Ronald Wolford, who was holding a firearm, uh, who soon realized uh, once it was officers dropped the firearm. 28-year-old Ronald Wolford of Phelps was arrested and charged with second-degree assault for allegedly shooting Blankenship. He is currently being held in the Pike County Detention Center under a $10,000 cash bond. Alpha Natural Resources this afternoon issued a warn notice to 292 employees at operations in Letcher and Wise counties. The notice indicates that the anticipated sale of the operations could result in idling of those facilities. In Letcher County, affected mines include the North Fork No. 6 mine where 111 employees work, as well as Panther No. 1, Stillhouse No. 1, and North Fork No. 7 mines which are already idled. In Wise County, the Dorchester and Osaka mines are affected, as well as the Pigeon Creek Processing Plant and support personnel at Maxim Shared Services. According to new numbers released by the U.S. Energy Information, coal production from mountaintop removal has taken a sharp drop in recent years. Since 2008, production from mountaintop removal has fallen 61 percent. By comparison, overall U.S. coal production has dropped 15 percent and surface production has declined 21 percent during the same time period. The agency cited competitive natural gas prices, increasing use of renewable generation, flat electricity demand, and environmental regulations as factors contributing to the decline. Wet roads are being blamed for a one-car wreck that killed a Letcher County woman and sent a passenger to the hospital. 45-year-old Lisa F. Sloan of Blackie was driving around 5 p.m. Sunday along Route 7 at Carbon Glow when she lost control of her vehicle and overturned several times. Sloan was ejected from the vehicle and was pronounced dead at the scene. Her passenger, 32-year-old David D. Fields, was taken to Whitesburg ARH Hospital for treatment of injuries. Neither Sloan nor Fields was wearing a seatbelt. Well, following last week's passage of a 1% occupational and net gain tax in Pike County, there are sure to be questions from those who will have to pay. Pike County Deputy Judge Executive Brian Morris says a work session will not be necessary to answer those questions. If a company or individual needs assistance or has a question, he says they can attend a Pike County Fiscal Corp meeting and participate in the public comments portion. I don't know if there'll be work sessions. I know in the physical court meetings themselves, if the, if the department has a need, I suggest that they come in front of the court and, and, and talk about their need. And, and the physical court will vote on, on if that need needs to be met. Morris adds that when money is spent by the fiscal court, it is addressed during a Pike County fiscal court meeting. He says one thing that the court is striving to do is be more transparent when it comes to money. Eastern Kentucky farmers looking to expand into commercial production are getting some assistance through the SOAR initiative. Under the SOAR Farm Loan Program, small food growers can apply for $7,500 loans with 1% interest rates and no closing costs. Business training and financial counseling are also available through the program. The fund is administered by Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation 
and grow Appalachia. For more information about the Farm Loan Program, you can visit SoarFarmLoans.org or contact Kentucky Highlands or Grow Appalachia representatives via the methods shown on your screen. Well, coming up, a high thrill attraction is becoming a high value resource for local nonprofits, and music students are brushing up on their skills this week in Pikeville. We'll tell you more after this. A camp held this week at Pikeville High School aims to give music students in the region an opportunity to study their craft close to home. EKB News reporter Courtney Leverin went to the Appalachian Institute of Music's Academy today. She brings us this report. While many students are normally relaxing during their summer vacation, over 80 students are spending a week at Pikeville High School learning about music. The AIM Summer Music Academy is the Appalachian Institute of Music. Um, we are sponsored by a local nonprofit CMH Arts, and um, our our group is a group of band directors and music teachers from the area, from uh, about three counties. Together, we have students from about five counties here um, for a music camp to learn about music and become better players. From trombones to tubas, trumpets to saxophones, the students are taught notes, rhythm, and different playing styles in both hands-on courses and classes. The AIM Appalachian Music Academy camp has been going on every summer for three years and costs $35 for each student to attend for a whole week. The camp gives students a closer place to go rather than camps in Lexington or Moorhead. Students of all ages came from five counties. The kids love it. The, the parents love it. The, the kids come back year after year and they want to know what's happening the next summer. It's, it's been really fun. Uh, it's a great learning experience for them too. We run them through a lot of classes. Um, academic kind um, where they learn about music and then courses where they perform music so they're, they're getting a lot out of it. This camp offers an affordable avenue for young music lovers and the instructors are volunteers from local band programs and the University of Pikeville. That gives them an the opportunity to have lessons that they usually won't get the extra help they need because most of them can't go to a college or a university to get private lessons or there aren't enough teachers to teach the lessons. And as a, a professor of music at a university, it really preps these students for future music study when they go to college. Building their theory skills and their rhythm skills just puts them in a better place for when they come to college and participate in band or choir. So it's been great to work with these kids. One clarinet player from Shelby Valley High School mentioned her thoughts on the camp. I learned a lot about music theory and rhythms and more about how to play the clarinet. It seems just like a normal camp, but it's really not. It's really helpful and it's very informative, which is good. The camp lasts from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily and will continue on until Friday. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levern. Pikeville's new zipline attraction was designed to provide thrills and adventure to locals and tourists alike. Now, however, it is also gaining a reputation as a community resource. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins went to Bob Amos Park to learn more about the unexpected benefit of the new ride. On Saturday, July 18th, anyone who rides Pikeville's White Lightning Zipline will be helping to raise money for Judy's Place for Kids. Officials with the City of Pikeville partnered with Judy's Place to create a fun summer event that will provide family fun while raising money for a good cause. July 18th, we partnered up with Judy's Place to have a uh, big fundraiser up here. We're going to have an all-day festival. Um, Judy's Place is going to have all kinds of stuff like cornhole tournaments. we got a Dunkin' booth. Uh, we're going to be selling food. For every person that rides that day, the White Lightning Zip Line is going to give back $10 per ticket. Judy's Place for Kids is a nonprofit child advocacy center in Pikeville that provides outpatient services to children who are victims of abuse. Judy's Place Executive Director Laura Kretzer said that while this is a fun event, it's also an opportunity to educate the public about their services. We will have staff and volunteers there all day who will know about the program and can answer your questions about what we do here to help children in our region when they have been abused. The fundraiser for Judy's Place will be from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. on July the 18th at White Lightning Zipline at Bob Amos Park. City officials tell us this is the third fundraising event they've held at the Zipline since it opened in April, and they hope to do more in the future. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. 
Well, coming up, a radio sports show popular across the state made a stop in Pikeville this morning. Joe Kinzer will be in to tell us about that. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will give us the weather forecast. We'll be back. Well, Lathan, I don't mean to complain, but can we turn off the faucet a little bit? Well, it seems like we have had a chance of rain in the forecast every day for the past, what, two months or so, yes. something like that. Yeah. And really, there's no sign that this pattern will be changing anytime soon. We do have a couple of downpours still moving across parts of eastern Kentucky. You can see that on the Doppler radar. One just moved through Pikeville a little bit ago, dropping a quick tenth to a quarter inch of rain. But if you look to the west, we still have one, two, three other areas of showers that will be moving to the east. So Pikeville, you are not out of the woods yet. You still have a little more rain to go through before things wind down. Now we did have a couple of heavier showers earlier today and for that reason a flood advisory is in effect until 730 this evening. This goes for Southern Perry and Letcher counties. Again, this is a flood advisory, meaning that some ponding on the roadways is likely in the ditches and the overpasses, things of that nature. On top of that, we still have that flash flood watch that is in effect for all of eastern Kentucky until 8 o'clock this evening. For Mingo, Logan, Buchanan, and Dickinson counties, that flash flood watch will go until 10 o'clock this evening. Once we get to uh, the sunset hour, maybe around 9 o'clock or so, the showers and thunderstorms will begin to die down. We should stay dry for much of the overnight hours tonight, but we will have to watch out for the fog to develop overnight tonight and especially for the morning commute tomorrow. Let's take a look at what you can expect for the rest of this evening. 7 o'clock, 78 degrees again with those scattered showers. Isolated showers at 9 o'clock and then again by 11 o'clock. I think we are dry, but that's when the fog will be forming across the region. Here's what we have going on on the satellite and radar composite. Have this front to the north at least for now, but an area of low pressure is forming near St. Louis and will be moving to our north. But at the same time as it does so, it's going to be dragging this front across the region for tomorrow. This is tomorrow morning. You see the front still to the west of Cincinnati, Lexington. But by tomorrow night, that front is right across eastern Kentucky, stretching from Pikeville to Bowling Green. This will eventually lift back to the north as a warm front during the day on Friday. But this will keep the rain chances in the forecast at least Thursday, Friday, and then uh, maybe a little less chance of rain as we head into the weekend. I'll show you that with a seven day here in just a second. Temperatures overnight tonight, upper 60s, low 70s. And then for tomorrow, we are back in the mid and upper 80s. All right, let's take a look at that pollen count. Sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. 2.6 on Thursday, 2.9 Friday, 3.9 on Saturday. But for the next three days, pollen count is going to remain in the low category. That all important seven day forecast, 87 for tomorrow, 87 on Friday, both days with a 40% chance of rain. Lowering that to a 30% chance of rain on Saturday, back near 90 degrees on Sunday. That 40% chance of rain I think will be late in the day and the rain chances again increasing as we head into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Looks to be a, a prolonged event of uh, some rain, widespread rain, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and again, We'll have to watch the creeks and streams. What a shock. Well, we're, we're in dog days, though. Right? We are, yeah. yeah. It's hard yeah. to believe, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lathan. And we'll be right back with sports. Well, Joe, KSR came to town today. Yeah, they've been sweeping all throughout the Commonwealth. Thanks a lot, Gary. And good evening. Joe Kins with your look of sports. Kentucky Sports Radio and Matt Jones were at Bank 253 earlier this morning. The eight-week 38-stop tour of the Commonwealth continues, and Michaela Colley files this report. Matt Jones and the KSR team made their 11th stop on the state tour today in downtown Pikeville. It's been great. Uh, we've had good crowds everywhere and it's picked up as it goes along. And some, you know, when Kentucky got the commitment of Jamal Murray, I think that uh, got the excitement back. Jones made a statement on his thoughts about this year's NBA draft. Well, I mean, it ended up great for UK. All the guys went probably higher than they thought they would, except for Aaron Harrison, and they're all in pretty good spots. So I think. 
from UK and Cal Perry's perspective couldn't be better and I think the players all got put in places that they can succeed. Cash Daniel verbally committed to UK this past weekend for football. Jones believes he will go far as a Wildcat. He's a perfect kid for Kentucky. Hey, Ron. Uh, all American. I mean, from the mountains, you can't ask for any more. And he seems like a great guy. I think he can really play. It's a position of need. So after about a year or so, I think he'll get a lot of uh, time on the field. I think he's got a chance to be really good. KSR will continue their tour with their 12th stop tomorrow morning. Williamson, West Virginia is the only out of state. Uh, station that we have and uh, this is in a mall and every time we go at the mall there we've had good crowds so I'm looking forward to it. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Michaela Colley. The UPI football program is slowly getting back into the swing of things for this upcoming fall. Head coach Al Holland Jr. says a lot of the players have already moved in on campus to prepare themselves to improve on last year's five and six season. The first game of the season will be held Thursday, August 27th at the Hamley Athletic Complex where the Bears will be taking on Bluefield College. Kickoff is we've 7 o'clock. Uh, 50 guys on campus, uh, you know, guys that are either in the area, local kids that are coming out and working out, returning players, or uh, some new incoming freshmen that is uh, enrolled into summer school and, and getting started back, uh, wanting to get started early and and get into the program and starting to learn things before we get into fall camp starting here in August. You know, our guys are, you know, they're lifting weights every day and uh, they're out running as a team and, and doing conditioning together. And then the guys, the players are going out to the field and, and uh, working with each other and, uh, and throwing the ball around a little bit uh, on their own time. So, and you know, that's, that's neat to, to watch our guys and the leadership of our older guys taking our younger players under their wings and, taking them out to the field and, and teaching them uh, some of the things what we'll be doing in the fall camp. The Cincinnati Reds were back at National Park last night taking on Washington in a much anticipated matchup between Johnny Cueto and Max Scherzer. While Cueto was on the mound and was on a row, Scherzer started off with some trouble. Top of the first, Joey Votto rips this one in a deep right field, scoring Brandon Phillips and the Reds were on top in business 1-0. Next batter, Jay Bruce, drive this one in a deep right field, just missing the home run by about two or three feet. Votto's going to come around to score. Jay Bruce will truck into third base, slides in safely, and the Reds extend the lead 2-0. Top of the third, National League All-Star snub Joey Votto says, what, what are you doing leaving me off the All-Star team? His 15th homer of the year and the Reds are now up 3-0. Max Scherzer absolutely getting lit up like a Christmas tree. Here's Joey Votto again, his third base hit of the night, scoring Billy Hamilton. That's Votto's third ribby of the night, 4-0, and Johnny Cueto right here trying to pitch himself into the All-Star game as the hurler had pinpoint control by allowing only two base hits and striking out 11 as he blanked the Nationals 5-0. Now the Reds will wrap up their series with the Nationals this evening. Coverage begins on Hit City USA 98-1 at 6.35. The game, however, will be delayed by rain. And finally, UK center John Toth has been named the Remington Awards watch list. That award goes out to the nation's top center. Toth has started 23 consecutive games for the Cats. And Gary, the Cats have four offensive linemen back, nine starters. It ought to be a good season it, for UK. It, it ought to be. It should be. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. And we'll be right back. Latham, we still have a few showers still lingering around. Maybe a few rumbles of thunder through sunset and things quiet down. Watch out for the fog if you will be out tonight or during the first half of the day tomorrow. 87 degrees, the high for tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, not only tomorrow, but Friday as well. And then we heat things up, upper 80s, low 90s for the weekend. And then, yes, of course, when you know it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a better chance of rain moving in and again. We'll have to watch for some high water issues. Okay, thank you very much. And Joe, you've got uh, some breaking news. Well, yeah, we do have some breaking news. As the Todd father, Todd Frazier, has been selected to the Home Run Derby coming up next week. Only eight participants 
He is the two seed, and in the first round, he'll take on Prince Fielder of the mm -hmm. Texas Rangers. Will be a pretty good matchup. Yeah, sure will. Now, our friend Ted Meadows will be coming up a little bit later on. Coming up at seven o'clock. If you want to boogie and dance down to some videos, <laughs> it's full throttle videos coming on at seven o'clock. Okay, thanks, Chill. Well, that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. As we sign off tonight, we'll leave you with a look at one of our forest friends and how he's been weathering recent rains. Good night and thanks for watching.